Aynı mı diyeceksin? Türkçesi ne olabilir? Yok artık falan mı? Değil mi? Learning a new language as an adult can be frustrating. If you ever tried to learn a new language, that is, as an adult, you've probably said things like, why do we have to use this tense? Or I always forget to say that. Or what does this ending mean? Why does it seem that languages we're trying to learn as adults have extraneous or unnecessary little bits of grammar? Why do we have to say things that we would never say in our languages? And why is it sometimes they don't have a word or a tense or some little bitter bob that we want to use that we just can't find? In today's video, I will introduce you to a famous quote that explains this really well and illustrate it with examples from the other languages that I speak, Spanish and Turkish. The difference between two languages isn't found in what can be said in these languages. It's found in what must be said in these languages. When speaking a different language or a new language, the problem isn't necessarily that you can't or you can't express an idea. The problem is that you are forced or you are required to express certain ideas you would normally just leave your listener to guess about. And then you're not asked to point out or you don't even have the tools to point out certain kinds of information that normally in your own language, the language you speak better or your native language, you do have to point out. For example, in English we have he, she, it. We have to point out the sex of third parties we're talking about. But in Turkish and Chinese you don't. Why would you point out that somebody is a man or a woman or whatever? You just, just don't say it. Let me make these ideas more clear to you by giving you examples from the two languages that I also speak. Y pues me contabas cómo te van las cosas. ¿Qué hay de nuevo? Nada. Ah, pero ¿sabes? No. Dime. ¿A quién vi el otro día? ¿A quién? A José Miguel. No. Besándose con la María. Ay, no me digas, ¿en serio? Sí, en serio. La María. La María, la María. No hay otra. Increíble. Esa, esa mm. mujer. You will notice that in Spanish we say be a Jose Miguel, not be Jose Miguel. And likewise, you know, if we fought with Miguel, we would say golpe a Miguel, not golpe a Miguel. This probably sounds weird to English speakers who would never say something like I punched to Miguel. In English we say I punched Miguel. Well, it so happens that in Spanish we have this sort of cultural or linguistic rule where if the object of a transitive sentence, like I see Mark, I hit Mark, I build a building. If the object of a transitive sentence is a living thing, especially if it's human, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. We mark it with a. And if it's not human, if it's not living, we don't mark it at all. Y bueno, entonces um, el otro día vi la nueva película de cómo se llama de Tarantino. ¿Has visto tú la película de Tarantino? No, no la he visto. ¿En serio? Muy buena. Tienes que verla. Te recomiendo. Y me puse tan frustrado, tan frustrado, que ¿sabes qué es lo que hice? Golpeé mi cabeza contra la pared. Maris, ¿por qué lo haces? En los ejemplos que just saw, neither the wall in I hit my head against the wall, nor Tarantino movie, in the example about watching a Tarantino movie, are living things. So we don't mark them with a. And that's the general tendency in Spanish. Even though Spanish is a very diverse language and spoken by many different kinds of people, different cultural backgrounds, generally speaking, transitive objects that are human or we have a personal relationship with or are living get marked with a. And things that are general or non-living don't get marked with a. Of course, dialects and people are not 100% predictable and these things do vary. In Turkish uh, and many related languages, and in fact many languages around the world, um, there are often these little markers you put on things to let the listener know how you know what you know. Uh, they're called evidential markers. And so, you know, if you received something as kind of hearsay or from a friend, then that's marked as, you know, I didn't see this. But if this is something that you experienced yourself and you know for a fact, you mark it differently or you don't mark it at all. They say, Shay, what are the. Mikanapio, have been in Varma? Var, var, or Masma? 
Ee? Ne olmuş biliyor musun? Özlemle evlenmiş. Özlem. Evet evet Özlemle. Bildiğimiz Özlemle. Kavga eti kız. Evet Özlem işte. Aynı Özlem yani. Oha. İngiltere'ye yerleşmişler. Yo. Hatta orada şimdi Londra'dan bir ev alıyorlarmış. Yok artık. You can see in this first example that every verb is marked with a little mush, mish, mush ending, which is used to let the listener know that the news that is being shared was gotten second hand, that it's not known for us as a certain fact. At the same time, these markers often get used to sort of mark related things, like whether something is a surprise to you. Dilara bana bir şey söyleyecektim. Ya ya, sana öyle şeyler söyleyeceğim ki. Josh'u biliyorsun. Biliyorum. Benim en yakın arkadaşım. Dün bana hiç beklemediğim bir şey söyledi. Ne söyledi? Bana aşıkmış yıllardır. Oh. Hatta benimle evlenmek istiyormuş. Aa. Evet. Şok oldum. Ne diyor ona? Hiçbir şey diyemedim. Ne diyebilirsin ki? Kendini böyle bir durumda düşün yani. Ne diyebilirsin? Çarşı ne kadar zamandır böyle düşünüyormuş? Uzun yıllar olduğunu söyledi. Oha. Yani dedim sana yabancılara takılma. Evet. Sanırım bundan sonra hayatıma hiçbir yabancıyı almayacağım. En iyisi yaz artık. Dilara marked all the things that she heard from Joshua with mush because she didn't expect them. She didn't know they were true beforehand. Just it's it's very shocking news. But of course, the telling of the story, what Josh said, gets marked differently because she was there for it. In my own personal experience with learning Turkish as an adult, you know, I'm still not 100% sure on the mushes, the little endings, and even though I kind of use them pretty well now. Uh, after three years of practice and living here, there's still times when I'm not entirely sure, uh, and it, or it doesn't come out entirely natural. So why does Turkish have this little marker for uh, secondhand news or unexpected news when English doesn't? Why does Spanish have this little marker for marking living objects when English doesn't? In English, we just say, "I saw the wall," "I saw the person." It makes no difference. These are the accidents of history. Uh, just like humans uh, and other primates have five fingers and five toes, and they are arboreal, they climb in trees, yet sloths only have three, uh, so in the same way, certain languages have certain tools that were probably important at some point in history, and because they were important once, they continue to be important. They continue to be a part of that culture. They continue to be a part of the way the language communicates. I like to tell people that language is like a puzzle. I'm talking to you, and I'm giving you a lot of the pieces of how I see the world. And I let you fill in the rest. So, a good example of this is the English he, she, it. In English, I am required, uh, much to the chagrin of many people, to let you know that he talked to her, but she didn't talk to him. Why do I have to mark she, he, it? Why do I have to say him, her? Well, because that's sort of the information that we give in English and we let, we let you guess the rest. Um, in Turkish and in Chinese and in many languages, you don't tell people about the gender or sex of other people. That gets guessed at. You know, you sort of know it from the context. But other things you have to mark, like how you got the news and the living state of an object. That's the beauty and randomness of language. And randomness of language. So I'm almost done editing this video. If you like this video, if this video taught you something about language, about the things you notice in foreign languages, then uh, be sure to like, subscribe, share it with friends, uh, especially those who are trying to learn foreign languages. Um, let me also thank Dilara for her help in acting and writing the script, and Özlem for helping me make this look a little better than it would have otherwise. Uh, see you next time. Uh, take care.